Hello and welcome to this video on solidification cracking in the metallurgy playlist on this YouTube channel, The Weld Nugget. To begin with, let me start by sharing the screen so you can follow along the discussion. My name is Girish Kelkar and I am a welding consultant working as WJM Technologies. Additional information on my welding consulting and training business is at on the web at welding-consultant.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about solidification cracking, an important aspect of welding. This uh, video and uh, this uh, YouTube channel have been set up for engineering personnel who have who have to who work with welding, soldering, or brazing on a daily basis, but do not have formal education or training in welding. Uh, if you are new to this uh, subject, uh, I would recommend that you review the three other videos that have been posted in this playlist, uh, including Introduction to Physical Metallurgy, where we review metals, alloys, phases, and grains, uh, Well Section Analysis video, where we look at fusion zone and the heat-affected zone, and Phase Diagrams, where we review solid solution, eutectic, and intermetallic phase diagrams. So with those introduction videos, we can go on to discussing solidification of alloys. Now you might uh, you might have seen this image in one of the earlier videos as well, where we are looking at how a fusion zone solidifies. On the right hand side, I'm showing you a cross section of a laser weld where there is a fusion zone uh, which has been formed during welding. When the laser was on, this volume of molten metal would have been liquid. At the end of the laser pulse, when the laser is turned off, this molten metal starts to lose heat to the adjacent solid materials, the base materials. And with that, it results in formation of initial crystals on the outer edges of the weld. As more heat is lost to the base materials, these crystals starts to grow. And in the beginning, these crystals will be elongated and pointed towards the center of the weld. After a certain amount of growth of these crystals, the remaining volume of molten metal will then solidify in an equiaxed manner. That means the grains have the same size and shape in all directions. So we have a segregated structure in the weld quite often. We have elongated grains on the edges and equiaxed grains in the center. In this particular example in the weld, we are not seeing any cracks. <clears throat> now let's look at the topic of solidification cracks, especially in steels. To the right, I am showing you a portion of the phase diagram, iron, iron sulfide. So uh, I'm showing the iron axis over here where there is pure iron and up to 30% sulfur. And on the vertical axis is time, oh, sorry, temperature, and we can see that the melting point of iron is about 1500 centigrade and the melting point of the iron iron sulfide eutectic is 1000 degrees centigrade. So this low melting eutectic at 1000 degrees centigrade is the main culprit in solidification cracking. So the main requirement for solidification cracking is this wide difference in temperature between uh, solidification of the main grains and solidification of the eutectic. As these grains, which I showed you on the previous slide, as they start solidifying, they tend to solidify and push out the impurities. So they tend to solidify as pure as possible and they tend to push out the impurities towards the grain boundaries. So even though in the overall steel, there might be a very small fraction of sulfur, let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0.3%. But as these grains are solidifying, this sulfur tends to get pushed to the grain boundaries. And at the grain boundaries, the amount or fraction of sulfur increases very dramatically. Iron sulfide is a weak alloy. So when iron sulfide does form and it's at the grain boundaries, it does not have the strength, bonding strength, to keep the grains together, the iron grains together. Now keep in mind that when a weld solidifies, there are a lot of stresses in the weld. First of all, the grains are uh, shrinking because of the coefficient of thermal expansion. As the grains are cooling, they are also shrinking. 
Secondly, the weld itself can undergo some amount of distortion, which can lead to stresses within the weld where the grains are being pulled away from each other. And if there is a thin layer of iron sulfide along the grain boundaries, then the grains are easily pulled away and the separation appears as crack in the weld sections. Usually, steels will have half a percent to two percent manganese. And the presence of this manganese is specifically uh, for bonding with the sulfur. And manganese sulfide has a much higher melting point and hence reduces the cracking tendency. Even then, if there is substantial amount of sulfur, uh, it is not always possible to avoid solidification cracking by having the presence of manganese. So as we mentioned before, the main reason for solidification cracking is a large temperature range of solidification. So the primary alloy is solidifying at a high temperature and the grain boundary and the accumulated uh, impurities at the grain boundary are solidify solidifying at a lower temperature. Main example that uh, we discussed uh, was uh, solidification cracking of steels and commonly occurs in free machining alloys which have up to 0.3% sulfur. They can be steels, they can be stainless steels, inconels, invar. There are many examples of uh, such failures. There are other systems where solidification cracking can occur. Uh, gold plating on Kovar packages also can cause cracking. So if you're gonna weld Kovar packages which have gold plating and you're gonna weld them with fusion welding, then you have to remove the gold plating in the weld zones. Phosphor bronze has known to have uh, caused cracking in copper tin alloys. Uh, 3003 aluminum is interesting. Uh, by conventional techniques, it may not crack, but when you weld it with lasers, and which is a common situation in electric vehicle batteries, that you want to weld 3003 with laser welding. Uh, even normal levels, which are acceptable ranges of silicon and iron, is too high and can cause cracking. So you have to procure a special grade of 3003 with much lower levels of silicon and iron to avoid cracking with laser welding. Uh, 6000 series is well known for solidification cracking on welding, uh, practically with any arc welding or laser or electron beam welding process. And uh, the solution over there is to add a filler alloy, which will compensate for these issues. The important thing to keep in mind, there are no good process solutions to avoid solidification cracking. So it's not like you can increase the power or decrease the power or increase the weld, a uh, weld time or slow down the cooling or add cooling blocks on the sides of the weld. None of that helps with solidification cracking. So you have to change the metallurgy. Here's an example, uh, cross sections of typical uh, solidification cracks. On the left-hand side is an image of a crack in a aluminum uh, 3003, uh, which had uh, cracks on the inside. And on the right, I'm showing you a cross section of a weld between a 304, which is a clean uh, version, and 303, which is a machinable grade version of 304 and has a lot of sulfur. Now that sulfur segregates to the grain boundaries and results in solidification cracking. <clears throat> Another example is uh, nickel plating on steels. Uh, there are two different types of nickel plating, electroplating and electroless plating. Electroless plating produces a plating which has phosphorus in the plating. And the presence of phosphorus acts in a similar way as the presence of sulfur and produces a low melting eutectic, which ends up producing cracks. In this cross section, you can see there's a laser weld between the two uh, sheets of steel. The steel on the top has nickel plating on both sides. You can see the nickel plating and that nickel plating gets consumed into the weld and the phosphorus from the nickel plating then results in cracking. In summary, Solidification cracking is perhaps the most common cause of uh, cracking in fusion welds. Uh, cracks appear due to segregation of impurity elements along grain boundaries during solidification. So segregation of impurities to the grain boundaries is not unusual. That happens in every weld. 
but it depends on if the material which is segregated, does it have very low melting point or does it have strong cohesion properties? And that will decide whether that impur those impurities can cause cracking. Uh, solving cracking problems does require a change in chemistry. Uh, you have to change either the base material or the plating composition, or you have to add additional filler alloy, suitable filler alloy, which will compensate for these issues. The challenging part is that it is not easy to solve solidification cracking by changing the process parameters. So it's not like you can increase or decrease the power or time or cooling or something to solve this problem. Okay. Thank you for your time. If you're interested in learning more about welding and joining, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow along and review the different videos that are in the playlist on this channel, including those for resistance welding, arc welding, metallurgy, and laser welding. Thank you again and enjoy your time in the welding business.